This is Lindley Oz, and we are on the Wyatt Archaeological Research website. Now, most of you probably know who Ron Wyatt is, and for those of you who don't, he is the man who found the place under the direction of the Holy Spirit where Jesus was crucified and where the Ark of the Covenant was located. Now, one day he was walking along with one of his sons named Danny, and all of a sudden he just stopped and he pointed at this location where the, there was a trash dump at, at the time. It was being used as a trash dump. And his left hand pointed to this site and he says, that's Jeremiah's grotto and the Ark of the Covenant is in there. Now, even though these words had come from his own mouth and his own hand had pointed, he had not consciously done or said these things. In fact, it was the first time he had ever thought about excavating for the Ark. So, in his research, while he was searching out the Bible, Ron had found that the last mention in the uh, Bible of the Ark's location in Jerusalem about the year 621 B.C., just 35 years before the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple by Nebuchadnezzar. This indicated that the Ark disappeared from the divine record sometime between 621 B.C. and 586 B.C. Since the temple was completely destroyed, there is no doubt that it was not there after that time. Ron found in 2 Kings 24, 13, 2 Kings 25, 13 through 18, and Jeremiah 52, 17 through 23, a very detailed account of the items taken to Babylon from the king's house and from the house of the Lord. It even mentioned small items like spoons, etc., but the ark is not mentioned. Neither is it mentioned in the list of things brought back from Babylon in the book of Ezra. We are told in Jeremiah 28.3 that everything taken to Babylon from the house of the Lord would be returned, and since the ark was not among the uh, returned items, this indicates that it was never taken there. So Shishak and Sennacherib also took items from the house of the Lord, but they did not include the ark of the covenant. Now Ron's theory was that the ark of the covenant was hidden just prior to the destruction of the temple when the city was surrounded by the Babylonian siege wall. The Ark of the Covenant was hidden somewhere within the confines of the city wall of Jerusalem and the Babylonian siege wall. The entire city of Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed in 586 BC by the Babylonians, so the Ark could have only escaped destruction or captivity by not being anywhere in the city. The site Ron had pointed to was, he believed, outside of the ancient city wall and within the siege wall. Two non-biblical sources, 2 Maccabees and Paralipomena of Jeremiah, stated that the sacred objects from the temple were hidden by Jeremiah before the destruction of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar. Ron's conclusion, it was supposition based on study, but still only supposition, yet it was enough to base a decision on. He decided to go ahead with the excavation. So you're probably curious then, well, so did he find it or did he not find it? What happened? Well, in 1979, in the month of January, is when the excavation begun. Ron Wyatt and his sons, Ronnie and Danny, returned to Jerusalem and began the excavations. They would eventually remove many tons of rock and debris, sifting through all of it for artifacts a requirement of the Department of Antiquities, which they were happy to comply with. They began by digging straight down along a cliff face, forming a steep wall with the earth they removed. Almost immediately, Ron noticed a shelf-like niche cut into the face of the cliff. Digging down further, he discovered there were three of these niches cut into the face of the cliff with a smaller one on the right side. And that, of course, ends up being where he believes that, if you recall, in the crucifixion of Jesus, on each side of Jesus was a criminal. One went to paradise with Jesus, the other did not. So there you have the three um, niches in the ground that he finds. As the location of the dig was in the vicinity of the skull phase, known to be a crucifixion site, Golgotha, the place of the skull, Ron was convinced that there were cut into the cliff face to hold that these were cut into the cliff face to hold signs 
or notices stating the crime of the crucifixion victims in three languages, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. As Ron continued to dig, he found a first century building. His conclusion that it was a first century building was based on the fact that the earliest coin he found in the dig was a Roman coin of Tiberius, who was emperor from 14 to 37 AD, the latest coins being from about 135 AD. This building was built directly adjacent to the cliff face and portion of the back wall extended along the actual face of the cliff. The foundations of the building were still in place. Ron noticed a very unusual large rock, which was too symmetrical to be a natural shaped rock. When he lifted it, he discovered that it was covering a squarish hole chiseled into the bedrock. And there you can see a picture of it on the screen. As he examined the hole and cleared away the dirt around it, he discovered that it had a large crack extending out from it. As they removed more dirt and debris, he discovered a platform-like shelf of bedrock, which extended out about eight feet from the face of the cliff, and his squarish hole was chiseled into this shelf. Or not his squarish hole, this squarish hole. And you can see a picture on the screen there. It's got diagrams showing you the squarish hole and the cracks. His earlier conclusion that the cut-out niches were for signs stating the crucifix crucifixion victim's crime was now supported by the fact that he had found more square holes, all about 12 to 13 inches square, cut into the bedrock. He was convinced that these holes once held crosses. The building structure that remained intact showed that it originally covered the entire site. He concluded, based on the evidence, they had found that a Christian church had been built over the place of the crucifixion of Christ. The stone wall extended along the cliff face directly behind the cross hole that was on the platform-like shelf of bedrock. It appeared that this was the place where the featured criminal victim was crucified, being elevated several feet above those crucified around him. He believed that the one elevated above the rest on the shelf-like platform of bedrock held the cross of Christ. The crack extending out from the cross hole on the elevated platform appeared to Ron to have been caused by an earthquake. Now, if you remember in the Bible, um, right at the moment Jesus took his last breath, there was a great earthquake and, the, and everything turned to black and, and it was split. The ground was split in two. It displayed no evidence of being chiseled. As he removed debris from the cross hole, he finally reached the bottom and measured it. It extended 23.5 inches into the solid bedrock while the crack appeared to extend much deeper. Now by 1980, Ron and the boys had been working in the same spot for almost two years. They had begun in January of 79 and it was now late 1980. They had explored the entire underground cliff face looking for an entrance into a cave or tunnel. Now, so they're in search of the ark, but let me explain this to you or share this. In one of his actual video interviews, it is described how the Ark of the Covenant was down underneath that crack and the blood of Jesus would have dripped down underground through that crack and on to the ark exactly where um, God required the blood of sacrifices to be laid in the Old Testament. So this is very interesting. I'm writing an article on it before on Before It's News, and there is a more detailed video I'm including in my article, but I wanted to give you a little bit of idea of what this is about. This here is a very long article. I will supply the link. You can see a picture here. That's a tight tunnel. I believe that's Ron Wyatt there inside of it. Ron Wyatt is currently dead. Um, he died of natural causes, from the best of my understanding. But I do want to tell you there is a lot of people out there trying to debunk Ron Wyatt. Now, Ron Wyatt was a Holy Spirit-filled Christian man. In fact, when he found this, he was overcome with the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. But wouldn't you know that a find such as this would only cause people to have more faith in Christ? So what does the enemy have to gain by making Ron Wyatt look like some liar? A lot. 
because the enemy doesn't want people to believe these things really happened. So please check out my article, check out the other video that I'm posting. If I can find the one with the interview with Ron Wyatt, I will put it there too. But I wholeheartedly believe the man found the Ark of the Covenant and it's just the stuff that he found and the way it's described is really amazing. So please do check it out. Thanks so much and God bless you.